I truly believe that November 22nd, 1963 changed my life forever. Coming home from junior high school in Philadelphia that Friday afternoon and watching Walter Cronkite with my dad alongside me announced to the country that President Kennedy had died had a profound effect upon me. I was 13 years old and I for the first time realized that there was a whole world out there and that events in the world could change the world and change a young man's outlook, outlook on the world. Since that day, November 22nd, 1963, the study of history, past and present, especially United States history, has been my passion. I've taken my class, I've taken my classes many, many times to Washington, D.C., and I marvel at the majestic sites that we visit. And I literally get the chills, maybe because we go in February, but <laughs> I get the chills at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the Iwo Jima Memorial, the views of the Potomac River behind Mount Vernon, the Vietnam Wall, and a place that probably inspired me to become a social studies teacher, President Kennedy's burial site. My lovely wife, Iris, and my son, Alex, who are here, will tell you <laughs> that I have to be in front of the TV set at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> Monday through Friday to watch Brian William, I mean, Lester Holt. <laughs> Sorry. To get my news fix. Because what's happening today becomes history tomorrow. I retired three years ago from Miami-Dade Public Schools after 39 years, and I said I would only return to teaching at a private school if I could teach American history. I got my wish. I love my job and I love history. I know that you teachers here know exactly what I'm talking about. Every year I ask my students on the first day of school, how many of you enjoy learning about social studies? And every year only a few hands go up. That's so sad. My goal has always been to make sure on the last day of school when I ask the same question, I see a vast majority of hands go up. Jay pointed to an American flag that was blowing in the wind and asked, how many stars are on that American flag? And the lady said, it's moving too fast to count them. <laughs> I don't want your students to be one of these people. Social studies teachers can and must do a better job inspiring the future leaders of American society. You're here tonight because you feel the same way that I do. The author David McCullough once said, History is who we are and why we are the way we are. Maybe you have had your November 22nd, 1963 experience, and hopefully you didn't even need one. You're here tonight because you love social studies and you're really good at what you do. I know that your students will leave school the last day with a love of history. I thank everyone for honoring me with the Paul Hansen Award. It is quite an honor. I look forward to seeing some of you up here one day. I'll never forget this night. Thank you so much. ways in class and on my spare time. And last I leave I leave you with a quote from his National Journal Honor Society of sponsor and his history teacher, Ms. Ortega. She says, it is with great pleasure that I write this letter of recommendation on, Dave, on Dave's behalf. He has been a student of mine for the past uh, three years, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And she, she leaves with, as Davis teacher, I've had the opportunity to observe his participation and interaction in class and to evaluate his knowledge of, of the social studies. He is an outstanding student in all respects. As a matter of fact, David is without question one of the most exceptional students I have taught in all my years of teaching. In class and his work, David demonstrates that he is an intellectual and dedicated student with great potential. 
David is a rare type of student. He, he combines remarkable natural ability with a willingness and eagerness to learn. He, he has always been among the top students in my class. So I present to you David Hernandez. <laughs> thank God for this recognition. I'm very grateful for it. I would like to thank my family for their constant love and support. I would like to thank my social studies teacher, Ms. Ortega. She is an amazing educator and an amazing teacher. I would like to thank my school, and once again, I'm very grateful for this honor. It really is a great honor. Thank you so much. John Doyle Student of the Year Award going to a high school senior. Um, first up, we have we have two um, brilliant young people to to honor today. So first up, we have Mr. Nicholas Nava. Nicholas is a student at the School for Advanced Studies South. Um, he's involved as well in many organizations, including Montreal Student Government Association. Um, in the Student Government Association, he serves as a vice president and a National Junior Honor Society where he is as well as Mr. President, so congratulations with that, to contribute to the community and the world I live in. And I also leave you with a quote from one of his social studies teacher, Mrs. Dean. Mrs. Dean says that he has incredible creative energies and a refreshing idealism. His dedication to his studies and his extracurricular activities are evidence of the fine character that exists in this remarkable young man. He has dedicated over 1,300 hours of community service, assisting the elderly as well as underprivileged elementary students in a poverty stricken area. He spent many hours tutoring fellow students last year at AP Macroeconomics. His efforts have produced high quality results time and time again. So I pre present to you Mr. Nicholas Novel. stubborn uh, if you live with me like they do you kind of see that and so I guess um, I kind of owe everything I've become everything that I've been able to achieve to them and their, um, their willingness to work with me and help me out achieve uh, my goals and uh, I want to thank Dr. Monty. Dr. Monte Gudo is a uh, principal of my school uh, school for advanced studies and I guess uh, I used to go to private school and I didn't know what I get myself into when I left but uh, he showed me and my teachers uh, Miss Dean uh, Dr. Johnson, my social studies teachers, have, uh, have kind of shown me about the world around me and the different things that impact us every day. Some of the subtler things that we don't really notice, the people that aren't seen, the voices that can't be heard. And they've kind of shown me that even though I'm young, I'm 17, uh, everybody has potential to make a difference in the world. And so they've really helped me utilize mine and uh, make a difference in the kind of sphere of influence that I have. So uh, thank you to, the, to you guys. And uh, yeah, thanks you all for being here. This is really cool. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And also, I forgot to note that he will be receiving, and the other um, student year recipient will be receiving a $500 scholarship check on behalf of the, the council. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, we have our last um, student recipient, award recipient, which is Ms. Fabiola Guavero. <laughs> so 
Ms. Fabiola is a student at School for Advanced Studies, the Kendall campus. Um, she too is involved in many organizations, including the student government, where she is the class representative, um, Florida Law and Debate Honor Society. She is a remarkable individual who excels in our fast paced and demanding work environment. Fabiola is an exceptional young woman of character who possesses a strong commitment to her education. Currently, Fabiola is a senior at the School of Advanced Studies with an impressive weighted GPA of 6.9. In addition, Fabiola is duly enrolled at Miami Dade College, pursuing a pre-bachelor pre associate of arts degree with an anticipated graduation date of May 2015. I present to you, Madam President, Ms. <laughs> Fabiola Fabiola. <laughs> Like my classmate Nick, I have to admit that I am quite stubborn. I have. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get through me, but without my parents, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be standing on the stage today had they not helped me. Sometimes told me, think about it twice, really think about it. I want to thank Dr. Monteagudo because SAS has offered me opportunities that I would have gotten anywhere else, and they have built to the person I am today. What I believe about social studies is while everyone was off getting excited to go to a chem lab, maybe blow something up, I was there excited to learn about what happened, what has happened in our world, about the intricacies of the legal um, system. And I believe that with what I've learned to this point, I am ready to go into the world as an educated citizen, and I just hope that as of today, moving on, I'll be able to cause some change in the world, set everything right. Thank you. Alexander Armenteros, if you would join, join me up here. Right. Mr. Armenteros teaches at Miami Springs Middle School. He's been teaching for over 15 years. He has been nationally board certified since 2007 and also has a gifted endorsement. He believes that his experience as a soldier serving in the U.S. Army, and also being a student of international relations and political science has allowed him to develop a unique classroom perspective. He also believes that learning, true learning takes place in an environment where not only the teachers are accountable, but the students and their parents as well, where students are taught not only using best practices, but common sense, what our forefathers would call prudence. Mr. Armenteros further explains that he diligently attends professional development not to become another teacher, but to create lessons that he finds valuable, and more importantly, that add value to the needs of his classroom. He firmly believes that teachers must double down and recommit themselves at daily as professionals with renewed vigor in the hopes of providing high quality education. He believes that student growth is a nat natural progression of solid teaching when all stakeholders are accountable. Teachers then have the capacity of reaching students' critical and creative capacities, both through powerful lectures and engaging projects. His instruction is designed to benefit students in a positive manner in their intellectual, social, civil, and moral development. For example, Mr. Armenteros uses a number of thought-provoking games, engaging projects, and unconventional activities to stimulate student interest in his classroom. 
He uses games such as the coconut game, the gerrymandering game, and the Cold War game, which I can tell you were extremely interesting. <laughs> Mr. Armenteros proposes that educators have their own oath, akin to the Hippocratic oath, to make sure that the pearl of education is never lost again. A Socratic oath in honor of one of the greatest teachers that ever lived. As educators, we must swear fidelity to stay true to the basic principles of good teaching. Ms. Kimberly Emanuel, principal of Miami Springs Middle, states that when help or support is needed, students, parents, and colleagues, all alike, seek out Mr. Armenteros. Socrates didn't have to worry about EOCs. <laughs> Her classroom welcomes curiosity and embraces diversion. Her high expectations may challenge young minds, but her nurturing presence inspires her students to strive for dreams. Her colleagues commend her dedication. They attest to her compassion for her students and her school. As her principal Lord as Diaz proclaims, she is an asset to her school, to her, to her school community. We acknowledge, respect, and adore Helene Byrd's commitment to the enlightenment of our youth, her efforts have fueled progress for the next generation. Jesse Ortega. <laughs> Ms. Ortega loves being a teacher. She's been teaching for seven years now and teaches and inspires for seventh grade civics and eighth grade U.S. history classes. <laughs> at Silver Glacier Middle School. She sponsors the National Junior Honor Society and the Student Council. She sees herself primarily as a facilitator of learning rather than an expert delivering information. To that end, she uses Edmundo, my big campus, to go paperless, and uses FLREA, iCivics, vocabulary, the Library of Congress, the National Archives, and History.com as resources for her students. Besides these, she also brings her passion and enthusiasm to her classroom. She believes in using student feedback to help shape her classes and their learning styles, to help her students better understand the fullness of civic duty beyond the governmental functions. Her principal motive is that she takes her students to visit daycare centers in low socioeconomic neighborhoods during the holiday season to deliver toys. That governmental side is also intended to her well, of course, with such a community's small collection. She configures not only her instruction to her students, but the learning environment as well. A self-proclaimed history nerd, she has one basic goal for her students, as she states many times, to learn to think. <laughs> and last but not least, Dr. Michelle Mark. for Advanced Studies at North Campus. She currently teaches AP U.S. History and AP Government. 
Reading through her application, the board was extremely impressed with her level of commitment and dedication to teaching. She's always willing to participate in workshops or a course to better her teaching craft. She, had, she has attended countless of workshops or courses hosted by the, by the county or other states around the U.S. She was invited to read for the AP Human Geo Free Response Exam in Cincinnati, Ohio. Last summer, she attended the Transatlantic Outreach Program in various cities in Germany. She also taught English in Osaka, Japan for one year. In 2011, she completed her doctorate in curriculum and instruction and is thinking about going back to school. I'm not sure what time. <laughs> <laughs> to get another degree in either economics or US history and all in the quest to give their, her, to basically better prepare her students. As a classroom teacher, she strives to keep things interesting and current she uses different methods to get students to learn the material. She uses like a TED talk, a Socratic circle, a small group presentation, and of course those handy crash course videos. <laughs> she also gets her, her kids to create her own, to create their own YouTube videos to, to assist and to tutor other students. She also believes that her students benefit from competing in district-wide competitions. Um, she has sponsored and coached students through competitions such as Mom UN, uh, the Geography Bee, and every year she takes her students to the program in National Security Studies at FIU. She is a firm believer that these experiences open a host of opportunities and possible career choices for her students. Her dedication to her students is also evident in the, in the words of her assistant principal, which she states in the recommendation letter. Dr. Marr goes the extra mile with her students. She is proactive, innovative. She always tries to keep updated with the latest and best methodology in social studies. Her essence radiates positivism. positivism. Our students are very fortunate in having such a knowledgeable and caring social studies teacher. It is with great pleasure that I present to you Dr. Michelle Moore. of the year is Miss Jessie Ortega. school, uh, my wonderful um, principal, Dr. Barcera, my awesome colleagues that are here with me, um, my wonderful student, David Hernandez, who, I mean, makes teaching like the dream job. It really is when, when you have students like that. Um, just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, and last but not Certainly not least, my family, who's always supported me, who's always stood there um, by my side, um, especially my mom, who's my best friend. So love you guys. Thank you so, so much. Well, I have good because we're doing a press release tomorrow morning. Okay, are we ready? Okay, perfect. You are shaking. All of our finalists and our winner receive um, 
admissions to a, a variety of different museums in the area. There's chocolate because I don't know about your school, but I'm the one that everyone comes to and goes, Regina, do you have chocolate? I think it has something to do with teaching. Um, we have some, some items from a variety of different items. Also, Pearson, Nini, where are you? Sorry, I don't, okay. Uh, from Pearson, each one of you grabs one of these baskets. They're not identical, but almost identical. They're, they're not, just grab a basket. You'll need someone to help you carry them. Um, also, the orchids, the way the orchids work, is our students, our high school students, take home an orchid. Our book winner takes home an orchid. No, you do not. Um, our finalists are our winner, and um, Iris, if you'll grab Gary's orchid, because I don't really know what to do with it. And, you know, every day, seriously, I go to work, and I'm surrounded by fabulous teachers. And one of the reasons I have been dedicated to this organization, as we all are, is to, so that we have that moment of recognition. We all do an amazing job. We have an amazing job to do. And congratulations for doing it. So. Oh, the money on the table, take it, spend it. Bob, do you have any last words you want to share? You don't have to. I mean, somebody will. <laughs> Yeah, I do have to make a quick comment about Gary's uh, Je uh, Leno or whatever. I took some students to Washington last month, and we were rushing around the Capitol. We'd gone to the Library of Congress, and there's the Supreme Court building, and one of my students very seriously goes, that's where Elle Woods won her case. If you don't know, it's legally blonde. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank the council again for this nice evening. After listening to this, uh, what the students are able to accomplish and at such a young age, I'm feeling a little inadequate. Um, but congratulations to all of you, you're amazing. Um, also to the teachers, um, all of you are deserving. Uh, congratulations uh, to our winner and um, keep up the good fight. Our job is really important and we appreciate your support. Toma la foto a todos juntos y con la ganadora y la ganadora al medio. Ah, yeah.
Is there, I see, I see, the left one with my phone. Ah, oh, awesome. Are you going to go? Yes, of course.